Shalom. I want to first start off giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Yahweh Shai. Ba'ashem Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and men that taught us this truth through the spirit and power of Yahweh. Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Peace and blessings unto the elect. Okay. This is going to be a quick vi uh, response video to the video that Apostle Tahar did entitled uh, our people or my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Now, the reason um, why the vast majority of Israelites who are the so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans of today, why they are destroyed for a lack of knowledge is because we broke the law, statutes and commandments of, of the Heavenly Father. OK. And I'm going to get uh, Hosea 4 and 6. I'll read it again, you know, real quick. And I'm going to bring out some uh, some more scriptures. So that's the reason why, as as we know. But um, two thirds of our people, they don't know why we are in this condition, why they don't know who they are, why they have all these different questions. You know, um, it don't come to mind for them that maybe we, we did something wrong. OK. And the whole thing is that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is only going to wake up a remnant of his people to the fact that they're Israelites. OK. And um, we are paying for our disobedience. We are paying for our disobedience. That's why we are in this condition of not knowing who we are. OK. And uh, it's about to be lifted up off of us pretty soon because not only this lady, uh, Nia Hope, don't know who she is and she's seeking for answers where she come from or who she is, her uh, identity. OK. And, you know, she's seeking from the from the enemy. But all this is uh, about to be over with. And the reason why it happened is because uh, uh we broke the law, statutes, and commandments, and we are uh, paying for it. Okay, part of the payment is our heritage is going to be taken away from us. Our identity, according to biblical prophecy, was going to be taken away from us. Okay, and the so-called white man and the other nations that have, especially the so-called white man who is the nation of Edom, who has had the biggest hand and destroying our identity, they're going to pay for it. And that show you uh, uh, the power of the most high and how, you know, you can't question the most high on how he do things because we, we broke the law, statutes and commandments. Therefore, part of our punishment was to uh, lose our, our identity in slavery. And on the on the other hand, the so-called taking us into slavery and taking our identity and oppressing and killing us and raping and robbing and murdering us, he's gonna pay. He's gonna pay a heavy price for that. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna try not to be all over the place. Uh, I'm gonna bring out these scriptures, and Lord willing. This video is edifying. This is Hosea chapter four, verse six. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou has rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. OK. And this show you the power in the uh, the mind of the most high. The way you can't try to figure out the most high. Why is he doing this? Why has he set up things this way? All we really need to be concerned about is doing what he's tell us to do uh, in these scriptures. OK. But the scriptures say, because thou has rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. So the most high set it up for our people to be blind in the, in the first place so that they would reject uh, the knowledge <clears throat> of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, the knowledge of these scriptures, okay, that's going to come out in these last days, that have been coming out here in these last days uh, for a long time, 
by way of the prophets, the men of the Lord that uh, that was set up to teach the understanding of this Bible. OK, the most High put it in their mind. To uh, reject this knowledge, OK, uh, therefore, they're going to lack knowledge. Or they're gonna, yes, scriptures say they, and they're gonna, our people are going to be destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they're gonna reject the knowledge that, and that's the way the Most High set it up. Okay? Let me finish this scripture. It says, That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power, I will also forget thy children. That's why we are in this condition of being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And, uh, being reject and, and rejecting this knowledge is because we broke the laws and the most high set it set this uh up as far as us not being able to get the truth and i say us because i'm talking about israel the nation of israel collectively but he has woken up a remnant okay and he's continuing to wake up the elect of the nation of israel to the fact that they're israelites and also giving them the the 100 percent understanding of this bible and you're gonna find that over here at great millstone okay you can't find out that you're an israelite from these other uh alphabet groups uh but you're not gonna get the complete truth okay now to back up the statement i made about the most high set it all up uh as far as us being blinded I'm going to hit a scripture on that. And I'm going to go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Because for breaking the law, statutes, and commandments, one of the uh, one of the curses is that the Most High was going to uh, bug us out. Okay? So this is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse, um, verse 28. It reads, The Lord Yahweh shall smite thee with madness, and blindness and astonishment of heart and that word heart i hadn't looked it up but i'm sure if you look it up it's going to go back to the hebrew word lob which means your mind so this scripture right here tells tells us that for breaking the law statutes and commandments okay this is one of the uh the curses that's going to come upon us and in in a nutshell that scripture is telling us I will he he's gonna bug the most high is gonna bug out the minds of of us. And we all were in that blind and astonished and mad state of mind uh, at one point. Okay? It's just that the most high uh has woken up and is still waking up uh a remnant of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who are the Israelites to their nationality, first and foremost to their nationality. That's the first thing that we uh we come back to. Or uh, yeah, that's the first thing that, that comes back to our uh mind. I want to get a scripture real quick. This is uh Second Peter three and one it says this uh, this second epistle beloved I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Okay, so the most high stirred up. Uh he's stirring up and has has been stirring up the the uh the minds of the Israelites to remember who they are through the preaching of this Bible. Okay? Through the true un uh understanding being preached. Out of this Bible, okay. Now going back to uh, going back to Isaiah, not Isaiah. I'm sorry, Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight. I'm gonna read verse twenty-eight again. It says, "The Lord Yahweh shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart." And it's talking about the mind. So the mind of the Israelites was gonna get uh, uh we're gonna be in a state of blindness one of the things they're going to be blind to is who they are as a people okay verse 29 it says 
and thou shalt grope at noonday as a blind, I'm sorry, as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. Okay, so these two scriptures right here tell us that one of the curses that was going to befall us is us being blind. Okay, mentally blind, spiritually blind. Okay, and one one thing we gonna be, what was one thing we was gonna be blind to that who we are, what is our identity, what's our nationality, you know. Um, this is Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter six verse nine, and it reads, and he said unto me, Go tell this people, this people being the Israelites. Hear ye indeed, but <clears throat> but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Okay, so this is uh, basically an angel. This was basically a count. If you read up above, a council being held in the uh, spiritual realm with the Most High and the angels, and uh, the Most High is asking who will go down and. Uh, Let me see. Uh, who will go down and, and, and uh, put the spirit of blindness in the minds of the Israelites? OK, so this is where I'm at. Verse nine, it says, and he said, and he said, go and tell this people hear ye indeed, but understand not and see ye indeed, but perceive not make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes okay this is all parabolic talk of the most high uh, uh, making it to where we were gonna lose understanding of who we uh, who we were as a people and just in general just not having the mind to understand this truth okay because we're telling the people the word is out all over the world that the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the Israelites, okay? And majority of our people are going to hear that, and they're going to fan the hand, or they're going to pass by it like it's nothing. They're not going to take heed to that because the Most High put the spirit of blindness on them. This is the account, okay? It says, uh, and hear with their ears, and understand what the Lord. Let me read that again. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and be, I'm sorry, and convert and be healed. Okay. So this scripture, if you go back and read it, is clearly telling you that the Most High sent an angel to be a a, a uh, to put a spiritual padlock. OK, on the minds of the Israelites. And if he didn't do it, they it telling it tells us it tells us at the end of the uh, tenth verse in Isaiah six that if this didn't happen, then when they hear the word, the truth of these scriptures, that they would convert and be healed. But the most high do not want uh, the whole nation of Israel to convert and be healed, come back to their identity and get the understanding of this truth, okay? He's going to show his might and power through a, through a small number, okay? That's how the Most High choose to show his magnificent power. Okay, so from there, I'm going to get, uh, I get Romans 11 and, and 7 and 8. This is Romans chapter uh, 11. And this proves we are the Okay, this proves we are the Israelites because it's written throughout the Bible as I'm going to continue going through some scriptures that we were going to lose our identity, that we were going to be in a bugged out state of mind. OK. And searching for who we are, not finding the answers except for a remnant. OK. This Romans 11 and 7, it says, what then Israel have not obtained? that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Okay? And, uh, 
Well, I read on, it says, according as it is written, the Most High has, has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David said, let their tables, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. Okay, so in a nutshell, these verses, you know, line upon line is telling you that uh, only a remnant is going to obtain this truth and the rest are going to be blinded. Okay. And when if they try to open up this Bible and get the understanding, the ones that the most high got set to have that spiritual padlock on their uh, on understanding this book. It's going to be a trap and a stumbling block uh, on to them. OK. Now from there, I would like to get. Uh, Want to get Jeremiah 17 and four. Got a couple of the scriptures and I'm going to uh, close this lesson out. But this I'm going to say it again. This proves we are the Israelites because of the condition of our people not knowing their nationality okay and they're going um about finding who are finding out who they are from the enemy okay and they're failing at it because the scriptures say they were going to fail at it because the most high has a a block a spiritual block on their mind okay Jeremiah 17 and 4, it reads, And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee. Uh, before I continue, part of discontinuing from our heritage is, is the first thing is knowing who we are, knowing your nationality, knowing that you are a Hebrew Israelite. Okay? We were going to discontinue from the knowing the fact that we were Hebrew Israelites. That's part of our that uh, everything else is in, is uh, inside of us being Hebrew Israelites. Meaning what I mean by that is the language that we speak, the laws, statutes and commandments that we keep. OK, which our high holy days are inside of that. OK. Our customs, our, uh, that's pretty much our culture. These laws, statutes, and commandments. And, uh, yeah, that's our culture and our language. And that def defines us as a Hebrew. That's what makes us, uh, well, our lineage going back to Eber, okay, makes us, uh, Hebrews. And then through Abraham, the lineage, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob makes us uh, Israelites, okay? So Hebrew Israelites and our heritage as Hebrew Israelites is the law, statutes, and statutes and commandments. So Jeremiah 17 and 4, it says, And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. That forever is talking about a long time because we coming out of the, we are, uh, and we have been for, for a long time now. We're coming out of that state of being discontinued from our heritage, okay? Because when Yahweh Shai came on the scene and shed his blood on the cross, um, he made that was the the beginning or that was the act that was done to make peace with the nation of Israel and the most high okay and you can read about that in Ephesians the uh the second chapter I believe it's in other scriptures but Ephesians 2 I believe Ephesians 2 yeah Ephesians 2 and 14 Yeah, Ephesians 2. And that's one scripture, but it's other scriptures on that. All right, so uh, 
Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much it on Jeremiah 17 and, 17 and 4. But it's telling you the Most High is pissed off at us. So he's gonna, he caused us to go into captivity. And really through captivity, that's why we don't know who we are. Because the so-called white man beat it out of us, destroyed our records, okay? He beat our nationality out of us. And if you watch that movie, uh, Kunta, uh, Roots with Kunta Kinte, he, uh, it showed you that scene, if you watch, where he beat him until he stopped calling himself Kunta Kinte and he called himself Toby. Or Toby. I forget how it's pronounced. Okay? And that's exactly what the so-called white man did. He beat our nationality out of us. Another good example of, uh, the so-called white man uh, beating and being a, 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 a damn devil to get the Negro, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans away from their heritage is what was done to the, uh, the so-called Native American Indians, which is the tribe of Reuben and Gad. Okay? He sent them off to a boarding school and forced them to stop speaking their native tongue, stop wearing their uh, native uh, clothing, and uh, keeping their customs completely made them discontinue from their, from their heritage. And the so-called Native American Indians were keeping some of the law, statutes, and commandments, and they uh, spoke uh, broken Hebrew okay and they kept like I said they kept some of the law statutes and commandments they wore fringes on their uh, garments okay and the so called white man made them well he did beat them uh, you, you can get on the YouTube and look at the testimonies of so called Native American Indians talking about their experience at these boarding schools okay and you can do your research on that. Look up, look up documentaries on it. How the white man sent Indians off to boarding school. You know, so-called Native American Indians. And um, they will testify that, that they were beaten. And they got in trouble if they did anything or said anything pertaining to their, their customs and culture. Okay. So, through going through captivity, we lost our identity through this captivity. The last scripture I'm going to leave with is uh, Psalm, 80, Psalm 83. You know, all basic scriptures, but, you know, it's good to go into the basics, you know. And if somebody for the, that's seeing this lesson for the first time, it, it, this won't be uh, so basic, you know. So this is Psalm chapter 83, starting at verse uh, 1, and this is a psalm of Asap. It says, Keep not thou silence, O Yahweh. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O, o Yahweh. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. So it's talking about our enemies, okay? Have came together, and I uh, I want to look that word tomot up, but I can't look it up at this time. But uh, you can look the word tomot up. It says, "And they that hate thee have lifted up the head." That lifted up the head represents uh, pride. Okay, pride. They come together in pride. Okay, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones okay who is this crafty counsel against thy people or who is the against thy people that's the Israelites and consulted against thy hidden ones the hidden ones are the Israelites it's hidden the fact is hidden that we are the Hebrew Israelites and it was done through crafty counsel Okay. 
they have said, and it's we're gonna get to it in just a second, who these nations are that came together with this crafty council to make uh to cause us to be called hidden ones or be hidden from the fact of who we are. Okay, they have said, come let us cut them off from being a nation. And that word nation and race is the same word or it's synonymous with each other. Okay, if you look up that nationality and you look up uh, race, it, it pretty much means the same thing. Okay, so let them cut them. So uh, the scripture saying, let us cut them off from being a nation or in other words, a race. A, which goes back to the, uh, I believe, Latin word raza, which means uh, sperm, uh, uh, seed. Okay. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And I read earlier in 2 Peter 3, uh, 3 and 1, that the Most High was going to stir up our pure minds through the preaching of the gospel by uh by way of remembrance and cause us to remember who we are remember the name uh of the heavenly father and his son okay it says for they have consulted together with one consent they are confederate against thee okay this all these other nations okay and it's going to list off the other nations it says the tabernacles of edom that's the so-called white man, because he's leading. He had led the charge in destroying our identity, and they're going to pay for it. OK, and the Ishmaelites, those are the so-called Arabs of Moab, the so-called Chinese and the Hagarines, uh, Gebal and Ammon and Amalek. That's the tribe of the uh, Edomites. OK, the Philistines. With the inhabitants of Tyre, Ashur also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Salah. And uh, if you read on down, it's, it's going to tell you that the Most High is going to judge them for this. Okay? This is all the nations, really through the uh, United Nations, okay? The leadership of these other races, they know we are the Israelites, okay? They know who the hell we are. This scripture right here is one scripture that, that proves it. All right. Another scripture is in uh, Revelation. Let me see. Revelation 11. But I'll end it on this right here. I'll end it on this scripture. Revelation 11. And uh, what is it? It's really 11 and 9. Okay, but I read it 8. It says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. This, this great city, okay, it says, which spiritually is called Sodom, okay, you, you don't, it don't take a rocket science to know why this place is and according to the Bible is known as Sodom because this is the main place on the planet Earth that pushes homosexuality and, and lesbianism. Okay. And it's it's made it's made as a norm, as a normal thing now here in this society. It says uh and spiritually called Egypt OK. Because I mean, for a few reasons, it's called Egypt because Egypt is the word Egypt is synonymous with uh, slavery. If you go back to the word uh, Egypt, it really is Martazarium, OK, or Mizraim. OK, which goes back to Martazarium, which uh, if you go all the way back to the root of that word Martazarium, OK, or you're going to look up the word Mizraim and it's going to give you the Hebrew word Matazarium, which if you go all the way back to the root of it, it means to bind or slavery, basically. OK. 
and you got the the pyramid on the back of the dollar okay the egyptian gods that were uh are worshipped here in these uh, in this kingdom okay so um it says where also our lord was crucified meaning where they uh what a so-called white man uh put up this false image of our lord and savior yahweh shai this white image okay here in the earth and really started really pushed it hard over here in this new in the new world what they call the new world on this western hemisphere uh over here in the americas okay on the israelite people But this is the point right here. I'm going to close this video out. It says, And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. That three days and a half represents 350 years, gauging from about the year of 1619 to uh, about 16, I'm sorry, 1970. 1970 okay if you do the math that's about 350 years okay and uh during that point in time or 1969 uh that's when the truth the can the truth of the scriptures start coming out the truth of the old and the new testament okay being pushed Really through a man by the name of Abba Bibbins, okay? It says, and all these, the nations and all the nations and the kindred shall see our dead bodies. What? Our spiritually dead bodies. We were going to be in a spiritually dead state. That's what the book of, the book of Ezekiel 37 is going into, where it talks about the, the valley uh, of dry bones that were very dry. And then it tell you in that same chapter that... Uh, that the Most High was going to breathe upon these, uh, basically bring, put their, the flesh back on the, the dry bones, which that's our identity, give us back the fact that we were Hebrew Israelites. And it also says he was going to breathe the breath in us, where that represents the understanding, okay, of these scriptures. It said, but the nations are going to see our dead bodies, okay? It says, it says, and and shall not suffer in graves, meaning when you are uh, when you put in a grave, you are uh, being put to rest, so to speak. Okay, you got that uh that uh R I P saying, rest in peace. Okay, so that being put in graves represents to be put uh at rest, and one way that we are not at rest. Is that the fact that we don't know that we're Hebrew Israelites? Okay, we don't know that we're Hebrew Israelites. Therefore, we don't know to cling and take hold of this Bible, except for the remnant that the Most High is waking up. So this scripture lets you know that uh, the other nations it said that they were not going to suffer our dead bodies to be put in graves, meaning they won't know they were going to know the fact that we were Israelites but we're not going to tell us so that we could have a sense of rest. Okay. So with that, you know, I hope this lesson was edifying. I'm going to close it out. Um, yeah, you can build a good or do a good lesson based upon this video if you watch it. So I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rekakwadash, Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, the men that taught us this truth through the Spirit. Peace and blessings unto the elect. Shalom.